Hello, my name is Faith Ganda and I'm here on behalf of No Limit. Today we'll be interviewing Mississauga's very own Matthew Gray. So here we have Matthew Gray here with us and he is an upcoming basketball star. And um, something that I really like about Matthew is that he just has a great head on his shoulders and I just feel like he could really speak out to some basketball players who are trying to be on the same path. So how are you today, Matthew? I'm fine, how are you? I'm good. So tell me a little bit more about yourself. Um, I'm a 16-year-old student athlete attending St. Francis Xavier right now. Um, next year I'll be playing basketball at Future College Prep in Carson, California. Oh, nice. Very impressive. So if I could just ask you, what position do you play? Uh, I'm a combo guard, so I play the point guard and shooting guard. So if I could just ask you a little bit more about your basketball experiences, how did you get started? Um, my dad got me into it at a very young age. Um, he would always have me shooting on the small nets when I was about like four years old. And ever since then I just got into house league, rap, uh, elementary school. I was playing on every team that I could. So. so when exactly did you know that you had a passion for basketball? Um, I would say it would be in my later years of elementary school. I knew that I wanted to take it to the next level and that's when I started taking it more seriously. Um, what are your plans right now with basketball? Where do you see yourself going from here forth? I'm um, working towards becoming a Division One athlete. Um, I'm just taking it day by day and trying to get better with each day. Hopefully, um, as long as I stay on that path, I'll get to where I'm trying to go. So you mentioned that you get to where you're trying to go. Where exactly are you trying to go? What do you see yourself within maybe the next five years? Uh, I would like to play pro basketball overseas. That's my goal. That's great. So Matthew, if I could just ask you, how would you define success? Uh, success to me is reaching any goal that you're working hard towards. Um, I think there's a lot of failures and lows along the way, but I think if you're truly happy with the end accomplishment, then that's all that matters. Okay, so if you could give me a formula for success, what, do you, what would you say? Like, What do you feel like somebody needs to have in order to be successful? Mm, a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice. I feel like uh, you have to be willing to give up a lot just to gain a little. Um, and you got to learn from the people that have been there or the people that are working to, to get there. Um, and surround yourself with the right people, the people that want to get there as well. Okay, so something that you just touched up on there was sacrifice. So if I could ask you, what would you say is the biggest sacrifice that you've had to make so far? Um, the biggest sacrifice I had to make was um, first semester of this year. Uh, I left home to go play at Athens Christian School. Um, I didn't end up getting eligible to play basketball there, so I came back to finish my semester at Xavier. Okay, so you went back to Xavier. So what was it like traveling to Georgia and then having to come back to St. Francis Xavier? Did that affect anything? Did that affect your, your, the, your, the way you were playing or anything of that sort? Um, I didn't feel like it was a setback. Uh, I just kept staying focused and positive and just kept working hard and doing what I do best. Okay, so you mentioned that you started playing basketball at age four and now you're turning 17, so that would make it about 13 years. So what really kept you going and what are your routines that you use to practice? Um, before school, I get up around 5.36 and I go to the gym. Uh, in the morning, I usually focus on shooting and dribbling. Um, I always start off with my form shooting because uh, I'm a shooter, basically that's my strength. Um, and at night I go back to the gym after school and after I do all my homework, I go to the weight room. Uh, I've been doing that a lot lately because I've been told I need to get bigger and stronger so I've been focusing on that a lot so I can compete at the next level. Okay, so you mentioned that you need to get bigger, so that, has that affected your diet in any way? Um, I have a set diet that uh, I have. I usually have three meals a day, um, a protein shake after each workout, and a pre-workout routine, so, yeah. Okay, so how do you feel that working out and changing your diet has really improved your performance on the basketball floor? Yeah, it's helped me a lot ever since uh, I've been starting to take the weight room a lot more seriously and change my diet. Um, the diet helps you have a lot more energy on the court and it helps you keep going for a longer period of time. And the weight room helps you compete uh, against the bigger guys and 
you don't get pushed around as much as I used to. Okay, perfect. So if you could just have some words of encouragement for any viewers that are watching, what would you say? Uh, I would just tell them to keep working hard and stick to your goals. Um, there's always going to be failure along the way, but as long as you stay positive, then you, you'll get to where you want to go. Exactly, and I think that's what it's all about. Determination, sacrifice, perseverance. You just have to keep on going. You started playing basketball at age four, correct? That is quite a young age. So who really motivated you to get started and to continue with basketball? Uh, definitely my dad. He always had a basketball in my hand, like whenever I could. Um, he always told me that I had the potential to go wherever I wanted to go, and he told me that I could do whatever I put my mind to. So I always believed in that, and he's helped me a lot along the way and kept me motivated to keep going. What would you say was maybe the biggest obstacle or challenge that you had to face? One that could possibly have held you back but you were able to overcome and how did you overcome it? Uh, I would say it was this year um, down at Athens Christian School when I wasn't eligible to play. Uh, I was really frustrated at the time because I sacrificed a lot to come down there and play basketball and not being able to play uh, I felt it was kind of a setback but when I changed my mindset and uh, stayed positive about it, it helped me get better and improve my game and uh, I turned a negative into a positive. Thanks, that's great, that's wonderful. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned some setbacks that you had after going to Athens Christian Prep School. How, what advice would you have to some of our viewers that are considering going over to the States for prep school? Um, I would tell them to make sure they do a lot of research before they rush into the decision. I think with me, um, I got caught up in going down south and playing basketball and um, wanting to go so bad that I just rushed into it. Um, I would tell them that um, make sure you talk to the coaches a lot and make sure you know the rules, the eligibility, and you'll be able to play. Okay, so on a more po positive note, how do you feel like that experience really changed you and shaped you into a better basketball player, a better person? Um, well, I was able to, when I was eligible in the summer, I was eligible in the summer before the season started, I was able to compete with uh, some of the best players in the country and I was able to hold my own when a lot of people said, oh, he's not big enough, he's not athletic enough to do it. I felt like I proved people wrong and it's just because I believed in myself, believed in my game. Perfect. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, so we would like to get our viewers to get a better understanding of who Matthew Gray is. So what would you say are some of your strengths, weaknesses, and if you do have any weaknesses, how do you feel like you could channel those weaknesses and turn them into strengths to improve your game? Um, my strengths would probably be uh, finding my teammates and getting, getting them open, uh, as well as shooting the ball. Um, my weakness is, has always been my strength. Um, I've been working on that a lot lately. Especially getting older, I, I need to focus on it a lot. So I've been in the weight room every night, uh, working with my strength coach, Jeff Aldum, and he's really helped me a lot, so. Okay, so ever since you hit the weight room, what differences have you noticed in your game? Um, my shot has gotten a lot stronger. Um, I've been able to compete against bigger guys, and yeah. So in greater detail, can you just touch up a bit more on your experience going over to Athens Christian Prep School? Um, it was a great experience. Um, I went down there with my mom. She helped me out a lot. Uh, we had an apartment down there close to the school. And um, I had a peanut, I have a peanut allergy and Georgia's like the peanut capital of the world. So she would always cook for me and come to all my games, support me. So it was really good having her down there. and. Uh, it was a different culture, had to get used to it, made new friends, new coaches, something you have to adjust to, so it was different. Wow, I could imagine. Okay, so Matthew, who would you say were some people that really left a mark in your life, people who were influential to you, people who really inspired you, kept you motivated, kept you going? Who were some of those people? Uh, definitely my two trainers, Kyle Julius with A-Game Hoops and Jeff Aldum with Oakville Hoops. They've definitely helped me develop my game and kept me positive and always gave me advice when I need it. And I'd say my brothers also, they've also they've always supported me and helped me and they were always there when I needed them.
I think um, in terms of his game, um, he strengthened his own body as well over there and I think he got stronger that way and I think he also got more confidence on the floor. He played, um, as he said, in the summer when he was eligible to play before the actual season started. Um, he played against some, some number one players down there and he, as he said, he did hold his own. He's a very good player and I think his self-confidence got even better with that. Um, mental strength, I think, was the biggest thing that he developed and he came back with a lot more mental strength. Um, you, you're in a foreign place, you really have to uh, prove yourself down there and uh, you, you, have to, you have to be ready for some ridicule, you have to be ready for, you know, not everyone's going to love you, not everyone's going to welcome you with open arms, you're in their territory and you've come down there. So all those things combined, I think he had to learn to, to build the mental strength and then on top of which, when we couldn't get the eligibility, um, I think he felt a let down in that area. But all those things combined, I think, you know, he just, he had a little, maybe, you know, five minute moping and then pulled the socks up and said, okay, let's get at it. And it, he got that mental strength. And I think coming back, uh, he came back with a lot more of that and it showed when he was playing on the floor back in Canada. And I think now going down again, he's overcome that. I think he's going to be a lot stronger mentally. And I think that was the greatest, um, I think, jump for him. Physically, he held his own down there and did very well, um, but I think mentally, I think that might have been the overall purpose for the trip, you know, unbeknownst to us. <laughs> so. I'm Matthew Gray, No Limits, Success is a Lifestyle.